from the historic Loretto Abbey Chapel. With the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents The Daily TV Mass. Welcome to the celebration of the Daily TV Mass. I am Father Francis Salesiar. The televising of this Mass is made possible by the contribution from Michelle Bowley from Quebec City, Quebec. This Mass is offered in loving memory of her mother, Francoise Simard, and in thanksgiving for the blessings of the daily TV Mass. On behalf of all the faithful across Canada and around the world, gathered for this celebration, we thank Michelle for the gift of this Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We live in troubled times. We are anxious of so many things. But the reading of today comes with the consoling message. Come to me, all you who are carrying heavy burdens. I will give you rest. Let us ask God's pardon and mercy for the moments where we fail to place our trust in God. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Maria Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Look upon us, O God, creator and ruler of all things, and that we may feel the working of your mercy. Grant that we may serve you with all of our heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The way of the righteous is level. O just one, you make smooth the path of the righteous. In the path of your judgments, O Lord, we wait for you. Your name and your renown are the soul's desire. My soul yearns for you in the night. My spirit within me earnestly seeks you. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world re learn righteousness. O Lord, you will ordain peace for us, for indeed all that we have done, you have done for us. O Lord, in distress they sought you. They poured out a prayer when your chastening was on them. Like a woman with a child, who writes and cries out in her pangs when she is near her time. So were we because of you, O Lord. We were with child, we write it, but we gave birth only to wind. We have won no victories on earth, and no one is born to inhabit the world. Your dead shall live, their corpses shall rise. O O dwellers in the dust, awake and sing for joy. For your Jew is a radiant Jew, and the earth will give birth to those long dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. And A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. Many years ago, Thomas More wrote a book called Care of the Soul. In the first sentence of his book, he claimed that the greatest malady of our time, implicated in all of our troubles and affecting us individually and socially, is loss of soul. When the soul is neglected, he wrote, it doesn't just go away. It appears symptomatically in obsessions, addictions, violence, and loss of meaning. Our generation has witnessed the change in technology, the way of life, by leaps and bounds. The technology has changed a lot in the last 30 years, but the world still neglects the soul. Though information and technology have grown so much, we have not changed much in our care for the soul. The problem is that when we don't face our soul and take care of it, it affects every other aspect of our lives, our relationships, our health, our sense of well-being, and purpose. Modern technology is good in many ways, but also bad in many other ways. It has helped people who are far away to feel close through phone calls, video calls, and FaceTime. But it has also driven people who are close to being far. Within families, within house, people text rather than talk to each other. We are all heavily laden. We can see plenty of evidence all around us of this weariness, this burden. We see a world that is weary and carrying a heavy burden and does not know where to turn to find rest. We see a world that regularly neglects its soul and desperately tries to distract itself from all of its life's burdens by running towards all that gives pleasure. The burden of life 
have become too great to bear. The witness has become, the weariness has become too overwhelming to ignore. When we take time to reflect, our life could seem a mess. The more inventions that we have, it seems, we are faced with more problems. So what do we do? From today's gospel, it is, seems to be simple. Jesus says, come to me, take my yoke, learn from me, and find rest for your souls. From Jesus, and, and only from Jesus. The invitation of Jesus is needed for our generation more than any other in human history. It really makes it clear that rest for our souls can only be found through our faith, through our relationship with Jesus. Because we are created by God and to be in a loving relationship with Him, sometimes we forget the basic catechism that we learned as a child. The Baltimore Catechism asks, why did God make us? The answer that it gives is, God made us to know him, to love him, and to serve him in this world, and to be happy with him forever in heaven. We are created for eternity, and our end goal is to be with the Lord forever. As long as we do not know the purpose of why we are created, and for what purpose we are created, we'll be running behind things that are not necessary, and our souls will become weary and heavily laid, loaded because we do not do what we are designed for. Just imagine, for example, a wrongly suited dress that you are wearing or a shoe that is two sizes smaller. That does not give a comfortable feeling at all. That's why Jesus invites us to take his yoke upon ourselves. Take my yoke upon you, Jesus says. When we come to Jesus and learn from him, we are yoked with him. He pulls with us. Jesus doesn't take away whatever we are pulling, but we no longer have to pull it alone. The biblical scholar William Barclay explains what Jesus means by this. In Palestine, he writes, ox yokes were made of wood. The ax was brought and the measurements were taken. The yoke was then roughed out and the ox was brought back to have the yoke tried on. The yoke was carefully adjusted so that it would fit well and not gall the neck of the patient beast. The yoke was tailor-made to fix the ox. So think about that. The yoke that Jesus offers is tailor-made for us. When you feel your life is falling apart and you can't find rest anywhere else, the invitation of Jesus comes to each of us. Come to me. The invitation is for all of us who have grown weary, who are carrying heavy burdens, and who long for true rest for our souls. Jesus offers us a yoke that is easy, a burden that is light. Let us go to him. Let us take his yoke and let us learn from him that he is gentle. Let us bring forth our prayers and petitions. We pray for ourselves that we may continue to listen to the invitation that comes from Jesus. Come to me, take my yoke, and may we run towards and seek his blessings and seek his yoke that he offers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our family members and friends who are carrying heavy burdens and do not know where to turn, that we may become an example of Christ's invitation to the people who are in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for broken relationships within families, among friends, within nations, 
that they may continue to experience the goodness of God. We pray to the Lord. For all those in our daily TV Mass prayer intentions book, we pray to the Lord. In our community prayer this month, we follow the lead of Pope Francis, who directs us to keep God's command to nurture and cherish creation. We pray for those who are working to protect all that is good in our common home, the earth. We pray to the Lord. We take a moment of silence to bring to God our own prayers and petitions. Heavenly Father, we bring before you all these prayers, knowing and trusting you always listen to us through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, dear brothers and sisters, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and good of all years, Holy Church. Look with favor on our supplications, O Lord, and in your kindness accept these your servants' offerings, that what each has offered to the honor of your name may serve the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just of a duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it new. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore, we too extol you with all the angels as in joyful celebration we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. 
for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with the Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Francis, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you that they are passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin, and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
judges but not according to judgment condemnation but through the Lord mercy be for me protection both you as well. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Please join me now in this act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in this holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. May the working of these heavenly gifts, O Lord, we pray, take possession of our minds and bodies, so that its effects, and not our own desires, may always prevail in us. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth in peace to love and serve one another. Amen. Our thanks to our donor for the gift of this Mass. We gather